Hello and welcome back for episode 114 of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. We're back at that same crucial part of the season again, the second knockout round of the Europa League. is where we've got stuck so many years in a row and we'll be hoping after a fairly promising first leg against Newcastle United, we might just be able to turn the tide today. We've also got a bit of a historic event, a first all-Welsh final in the SPFL Trust Trophy. We'll be taking on TNS and it'll be really interesting to see how much they've progressed there. They gave us a close game in the league recently and they may well want to do so again. If they can break our trend of trophies there, that'll be a massive boost for them. So let's just see how we get on. If you're looking forward to it and seeing if we can break our duck and get to the last eight, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. We've got a youth intake to meet as well. So subscribe down below to stay up to date with their progress as we've got daily videos from two long-term FM21 stories. There's links to all the playlists, including some special Euro 2020 based stuff up in the eye above. And there's a link to the Twitch channel in the description below. We've got regular Euro watch along streams there as well as football manager content too. So come and follow us over there. It's always pleasant plenty of fun and it's great to have you along thank you so much to those who have made it so special so far and let's have a look at the one game off camera because we faced Lam Dudno on Sunday now we rotated heavily as you'd expect Kyle Bulkley the youngster got himself a goal two in the first five minutes with him and Joe Duffy opening the scoring Kresimir Loza got one in the second half and we just look really comfortable we've got to the stage now where Bulkley's starting to look like he belongs at the top level We've got Tom Jones, who's always improving. We've got the likes of Loza. I mean, the fact that Loza's a backup striker for us just shows how far we've come. And we did have a slightly stronger squad in that one because of the suspensions to Broome and Lloyd tonight. They both played in that game instead. So Newcastle away is going to be difficult. We know that already. We've then got the SPFL game on Sunday. They've got a few players ineligible and Jake Vokin suspended. We've got everyone fit for that. We've had to move some other fixtures due to the internationals. We're just losing too many players now. Literally half the squad is going on international duty. It's a very good sign for us moving forward though. But before we go and get into any of that and have a look at today's two games, including a crucial cup final and a big Europa League tie, let's have a look at our youth intake. And I'll take you back to the message we got at last weekend. And I'm afraid to say this is it. Probably the worst youth intake we've had in about five years. Probably since the year before Tom Jones came through. No one with more than three star potential. No one with more than one star ability. We said we can't get special players every year. We said that Kenny Jacket is a very good judge of character. And my word, he's got this right. In the likes of Wildig and Owen and Evans and Martin, probably still four players that will have a go at being good players at this level. And even the fullback there, Maguna, to an extent. They'll have a chance of playing for other clubs in this division. But they're not going to set the world alight for us. And bar injuries where we need an under-19 on the bench, I can't actually see any of them making an appearance for us. Maybe aside from the keeper, which is the saddest thing. So not the best youth intake, not the start we were hoping for. But we'll keep developing them, we'll keep doing our best to prepare them for other Welsh teams. We want to keep developing the league that way. But for tonight, it's all about us developing the league off the pitch, building the coefficient against Newcastle United. I know I've given you this update a few times this season, but just so you can see what the first leg has done, it's taken this season for Wales up to 6.375 now. So it was 6.125, we've got another quarter of a point. That takes us up to 25 overall. So looking below us, I can see, is that Croatia who are going to overtake us? Because they've had another decent year. And their worst year is coming off next year as well. So they're going to be up there for a couple now. However, we're set to overtake Greece, the Czech Republic and Denmark. Although I will say the Czech Republic is still going because there's someone who's moving along there. I think Slavia Prague is still in one of the competitions. So we might not stay ahead of them for long. But even if we go up a net two places, then fantastic. It's now got us to within a point and a quarter of Kazakhstan. I mean, we're now pushing towards the top 17-16 where we get to the third qualifier. If I remind you what it means in terms of qualification places, I know the next few don't mean a huge amount for the other teams in Welsh football, but imagine when we get to there. When we get to 15th place, we get a side in the third qualifying round for the Europa League. They've only got to win one game, get one lucky draw, and they're in the Europa Conference group stages. So we're well on the way. We're doing as much as possible for Welsh football. And if one of those two teams, Barry and TNS, can just sneak into the group stages next year, 
I think it will be the season. So let's see if it happens. We've got to do our bit tonight. It's nil-nil. The tie's on a knife edge after Newcastle visited the race course. But now we're off to St. James's. And this is going to be a much more difficult test. They've got a fabulous team, but we have shocked the odds a lot in Europe. We know we're playing Valencia, who won on away goals, if we get through in this one. Jeffrey Egan's in their team, who, ironically, is one of the best Irish players. He's like the Robbie Keane of this generation for them. So, it's going to be a tough test if we get through regardless. Galatasaray in the last eight. You saw what we did to them in a Champions League playoff earlier in the season. But let's just go and get through it. This is the strongest eleven we can put out today. Basically, Malone and Price in for the suspended Broom and Harvey Lloyd. Everyone else is first choice. So, strongest 11 and 18. Because of those two that miss out on the bench, we've brought Anderson in to give us a midfield option. But also Ratcliffe, because I don't want a keeper injury costing us. I know I don't think we've ever had one in this save so far. But I don't want tonight to be the night. So, I am for the first time exercising caution. It means our squad is George Wickens in goal. McDonald and Weaver, the fullbacks with McKenzie. Really established himself as that centre-half now alongside Matty Whitaker. Price, Malone, Furlong and Jones, the midfield diamond. And McKinnon and Walters up front. Still loads of goals in us. Still a really good side. But it's not quite full strength. And against Newcastle, I don't know if we can get away with that. Let's go and get into the second leg with a tie perfectly poised. And see if we can get the result on the night to get us through. Remember, any score draw or any victory... And we're in the last eight. Let's see if we can do it. And it's a very similar team to the one we saw last week. Collier's on the bench who started that game. And maybe they have gone a little stronger actually. But aside from that, they've got their star number nine back in. They've got their first choice defence out. Signorelli, Traore, the like still in the middle. It's going to be a really, really tough game. And with the Newcastle faithful, the Geordies at St. James's, it's going to be an intimidating atmosphere. One that our players won't have played in too often. Let's see how they cope with it. They can't even fill the away end for a big tie like this. I'm sure Newcastle would have taken the seats if they've been offered them. But let's just see how long we can hold out for. We're going to drop to a balanced mentality. We're going to try and hit them on the break a bit. But we know this is an extremely tough ask. We've just got to hope that it's our lucky night. Well, do you know what? We're coming up to half time. We've seen nothing of the match again. A bit like the TNS game at the start of the last episode. Newcastle have dominated the stats. But we've restricted them. Although they are coming forward with an aggressive throw. Or an attacking throw I should say. In stoppage time of the first half. Through to Traore. It's a brilliant save by Wickens. But I've got to be honest. The fact we've restricted them this well in the first half is a great sign. Because if we can get nil-nil. We can get no extra time. You never know. And Jones is on the counter. And it only takes one of these. And Newcastle would need two. As Jones gets himself down the right. He's closed down well by Signorelli. He's just not got the quality to compete with that. Maybe one day him and Bulkley will. But for now, it's nil-nil on the night. We've been outplayed. But it's been a fabulous effort yet again from these lads. 45 more minutes to go. And we've got a free kick to defend from the left for Newcastle. Oh, don't let it be a set piece. After all of that, it's defender Estevez. With a knockdown from Traore from a free kick. All of the open play stuff we worked so hard to avoid. And then we let in a stupid goal from a free kick. And now they've got another one with Estevez. He's going on a goal-scoring spree now. One goal for the season. He's now scored a knockdown from a set-piece. And he scored his own free kick. Absolute chaos. 2-0 to Newcastle. And the last 16 curse strikes again. And they're back on the left-hand side with seven. Ten minutes gone in the second half. We are at risk of collapsing here. McDonald forces him back to the left-back. Omolchenko gets it in with a switch of play to Calderon. He's unopposed into the box. Weaver makes a great tackle. Forces him back, but it's in again. It's an own goal from Whitaker. This is now carnage. In the space of 10 minutes, this tie has been completely wiped away from us. So let's go and rest Furlong. Let's get Anderson on. Let's get Bulkley on for Jones. Keep resting people. And hopefully now we can just restrict the damage. I'll do McKinnon for Loza as well. Be a good experience for him. But what a 10 minutes that's been. The normal woes we face in the last 16 of the Europa League. And it's just a hurdle at the moment. The Portos, the Newcastles, they're just too strong. And we can't cope as Traore puts a free kick in again. I'd like to avoid this getting embarrassing because we haven't deserved that over the season. As Bulkley comes on the counter, gives it to Kane Walters. Be nice to get a goal. Walters beats his man. It's a great sliding tackle though from Signorelli. Deflects it wide of the post. Good counter attack from Bulkley though, the youngster. Give it a couple of years, he'll be our star player as well. He's delivering this set piece though, doesn't beat the first man. Goes out as far as Malone. You can see from Price and Malone's rating as well, we've really missed the likes of Harvey Lloyd. Just that bite in there to stop the ball going through. 
with 20 minutes to go. It's not been the worst effort. And 3-0 on aggregate to Newcastle at the start, you'd probably say wasn't that bad. But after the first leg and after the first half of this one, you were just hoping. You thought maybe this could be it. Maybe this could be the night. As Watson gets in again, it's 4-0. It beats Wickens at the near post. That's not good goalkeeping. A debut goal for him. So he must be a youngster off the bench or something, I'm guessing. What's he like, Watson? Let's go and have a look. Watson off the right wing. He's a 19-year-old backup striker. Only played in the EFL trophy before. But even by our standards, he'd be in the first team. And that's where the difference is here. It's a comfortable win for Newcastle on the night. The confidence is flowing. Ours is shattered. And we're just trying to stop five now. Five would be so, so harsh. Watson's got it on the right again, though. Lowe's a fair play to him. He's chasing him all the way back to the corner flag. But he can't do much about that. The cross goes in. It beats four defenders in the box to Renato. And he puts it in for five. We have met our match in tonight's game. And as always, we've met our match in the last 16 of the Europa League. They weren't any more dominant than they were in Wales. They just took their chances here. And expected goals of two. And they score five. And you know what? The lads weren't that bad. George Wickens still got a seven. But we're going to have to bounce back quick. Because in three days' time, we face TNS in the SPFL Trust Trophy final. And it's bad enough that we've dropped at the same hurdle in the Europa League. We don't want to fall against a fellow Welsh side in another competition too. We'll be back in a minute to see if we can avoid that. Cup final time, redemption time. Well, after the spare in England in midweek in Europe, we're off to Scotland to face a fellow Welsh side in a cup final. All makes sense. It's the SPFL Trust Trophy final. It's TNS v Bangor City. And actually, I know it doesn't seem like it on the face of it. I think this is one of the most historic moments of the series. For TNS to get to the final alongside us, for Welsh football to dominate a UK trophy, it takes us above the Northern Irish League firmly. It takes us above the Scottish Championship firmly. And don't forget, the Scottish Championship still level with us in the competition reputation. If we can start to edge up with results like this and outcomes like this in domestic competitions and in Europe, then we're on to something special. TNS need to do the work today. Gave us a very good game in the league just a few weeks ago in the last episode. So let's see what they've got in store for us in this cup final. I've got a few decisions to make tactically. Of course, Broom is back. As is Harvey Lloyd in the holding role. We're going to put John Price on the bench for Ratcliffe. We're going to put Malone on the bench for Anderson. And I think that's about as strong as we can go. I'm tempted to do other little bits, but that's our strongest 11. I know it's not hugely confident, but the morale's still fairly intact after that 5-0 defeat. And there's two schools of thought, aren't there? If ever there was a chance to bounce back, it's a cup final three days later. However, we do know from Port Vale a few years ago and other games we've played in this competition in the past, it can go wrong the weekend after Europe. We've even had it in the League Cup domestically. So it's going to be quite a difficult ask. But Harvey Lloyd and Chris Broom back into the first 11. They come in for Malone and for Price who were deputising in midweek. So we're stronger than we were against Newcastle. Now let's go and prove it on the pitch. It should be an absolutely cracking final. And let's just hope TNS play their part. Let's make it a great advert for Welsh football. As we see all of the big guns back into the team. Perhaps aside from Oli Ewing who we might expect to start. But Dominic Booth. He has struggled a bit since his early season injuries, but he's back in now. Jason Williams at centre-half. Of course, the rest of their defence weakened by no Burgess and no Stefan Banks on loan from us. They're also missing Warren Bell as well, who falls in the same category from January. But Noah Daly, Rodri Dory and Declan Hall, we know they've got quality. Luffer in goal is a top-class act. So although they're not at their best, they are getting stronger. And they're even going to get stronger against us next season when some of those players join them permanently. So let's just see what they've got in store today. We've got to be aware of the counter-attacks, but we tell our lads to prove a point. Let's build the confidence again after that Newcastle thrashing and see how we get on in the final. Up to Scotland we go. It's TNS v Bangor City. And eight minutes in, we're back with a TNS throw on the left-hand side. Dennis, one of their January signings, plays a 1-2 with Antwi. Tries to get to the byline, beats Broom to it and gives it to Dorian. And they're keeping it quite nicely here, spraying it about slowly. Keeping the tempo down, keeping the ball, dragging us out of position like there. It falls for Noah Daly on the right. A man we always know well from the Cliftonville save last year. And we're going to have to be very wary of him. We know he's still got the legs. We know he's still got the quality. As Patel, the sub right back to Williams. Chips it up to Booth who flicks on. And Twee tries to get there but Whitaker intercepts. And after a poor game in midweek, a very rare one for him it must be said. 
We need a good performance from him today. As Mackenzie and Weaver play a 1-2 before giving it back to Wickens. It's another one of these really long ground out highlights. And it means it's got a lead to something as it releases to Weaver on the left. Down the line for Walters. It's got a man to take on. Gets to the byline. There's two in the middle. Beats him and wins the penalty. Now who's going to take it? Do I go Walters or do I go McKinnon? I've got to go Walters. He scored so many this year, but he did blaze one wide at the post a month or so ago. What's he going to do today? Kane Walters with a chance to give the Bangor City fans something to cheer about. And they go flying up, arms aloft behind the goal. Because Kane Walters with his 52nd goal of the season. 52nd, that's right. Better than Greg Pringle ever managed. It's Bangor City 1, TNS 0. And we're on course for another SPFL Trust Trophy final success. 20 minutes on the clock. It's been a dominant display. And we couldn't be happier with the response from the Newcastle performance so far. And we're back with just over five minutes to go to half time. It's Weaver picking it up on the left for Furlong. Through ball again just over here. And Lufra gets there. But Walters, you could see he was anticipating. He was trying to make that run. Lufra goes for the long kick though. Booth flicks on for Antwi. And as you can see, like the league game, they're still causing us problems. Antwi gets to the byline. He's got two in the middle. One of them's daily at the back post. Brings it down for Patel, his fullback. He cuts inside to Hall, but it's under hit. Jones nicks it, plays through to Ewan McKinnon. The Scottish wonder kid's in, he's got to score. And he does score. And from TNS, having a great chance to equalise. One misplaced pass against this Bangor City team of mine. And on the counter-attack, these attacking three are absolutely ruthless. Brilliant to watch, a fantastic counter. And that means it's 2-0 at half-time. And touch wood, should be job done, barring a miracle. So we're going to get the lads to prove a point, we'll get into the second half. And I don't think we can ask for much more. Just a solid, efficient performance. And again, it's TNS coming forward. We're just inviting them onto us almost. It's almost a deliberate ploy. As Hoy Hall gives it away to Jones again, sorry. So long ball forward to Walters, who's on the counter-attack. He makes it three. And they've got to take Declan Hall off. He's cost them two goals with misplaced 10-yard passes. Tom Jones, to be fair, the number 10. Dropping in deep, winning it back for the counter. But it's not good enough from TNS. And they can't afford that on the big stage. Maybe it is just nerves. Maybe it is just someone who's not quite at their best. But it's not good enough. As it's into Whitaker at the back post from a free kick. And that one's just over the bar. At the hour mark, we're looking comfortable at the moment. I mean, Hall is a great passer of the ball. He shouldn't be misplacing those. With 25 minutes left, we're going to make some changes. And hopefully, we'll see this out pretty comfortably. I'm going to replace Scott Furlong in the middle with Kyo Bulkley. Just because he's the hot prospect, we want to get him as much football on the bigger stages as possible. And a cup final, that mentality, you can't replicate it. McDonald at right back's had an average game. So Gwyn Morgan, another one of the youth players, will get a run out. And then it's just what we do in terms of midfielders or strikers. Whitaker's actually had an average game. So do you know what? Let's bring on young Pasirek. He'll get 10 minutes. It's 3-0. It's game over. And they've even started taking off the likes of Booth and Daly. They're resting people for the league now. They've got to wrap up second ahead of Barrytown United. And they want to try and win the Welsh Cup. But for us... A dominant display in the SPFL Trust Trophy final. Yes, progress in the sense that TNS made it there with us. But some real individual errors on the big stage has cost them dearly today. 3-0 in a game that probably didn't reflect that. But Bangor City, for the third year in a row, we set an unbeaten record on our way to the final this year for the most wins in succession. And again, we lift the SPFL Trust Trophy. A fantastic achievement for Bangor City Football Club. And a fantastic moment for Welsh football to have two teams together in a final. A lovely end to the episode after a very disappointing start. But we bounce back from Newcastle in the best possible way. And maybe we're one year closer to breaking our duck in Europe too. It won't hurt us to keep the winning mentality going. I've got an achievement to say I'm a trophy hoarder from Steam as well. So I must be doing something right. But another bit of money in the coffers. Another stunning performance. And Bangor City Football Club are on a roll. Yes, it started with disappointment. We went out at the same stage in Europe for the umpteenth time. But now we're in the best possible shape. We're heading towards another collision course with TNS in the Welsh Cup final. So all being well, we're going to come back for that, our final game of the season. We'll have a look at the review and what we're intending to do this summer as well. And whether we can sneak up in those coefficient places. Though that 5-0 defeat's probably cost us, I'm afraid. 
If you did enjoy the episode though, two very contrasting results, please chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. We've got loads of playlists up in the eye above, some special Euros based one both from Football Manager, Panini sticker books and the like. And there's also a link to the Food Channel up there. I'd really appreciate it if you could go over and subscribe. It does make a massive difference to me. And of course, we've got regular live streams on Twitch, both from the Euros, watching the football together and hanging out, and also from Football Manager as well. So please do go and follow us over there. There's a link in the description, and we're going to have loads of streams coming over the summer. But a big thanks for watching, for joining me as always. It is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time as we try to finish the season in style again, with what I hope will be a third successive domestic quadruple. And Touchwood, more importantly for Welsh football, the best sides qualifying for Europe. I'll see you next time to find out if it happens.